Hi, I'm Karl Lagerveld and this is my story. I was born in Hamburg, Germany on the 10th of September 1933. When I was younger, I always preferred to look different from the other kids and I couldn't wait to grow up. For me, my childhood felt awful. I wanted to make my own decisions. I wore big bows and I love wearing the Tyrol dress. I haven't really changed. I still want to be different. Do you want to know why? Keep watching. My parents married in 1930. My older sister Marta Christiane was born in 1931. My father had a child from a former relationship. So I also have a half-sister. We lived in a big house built in 1900, which was situated 40 kilometers from Hamburg. I lived together with my parents and my older sisters in a T-shaped house with a big balcony which went across the front of our house. There was my room and my father's dressing room. My mother lived on the left side of the house. She had her own living room and her bedroom. On the other side of the house were my sister's rooms. They had a big window with a view over the garden. In front of our house we had a big pad made from stones where all the cars could drive in. In the middle of our driveway there was a big round pond which was surrounded by flower beds. There were also two big statues with flowers on top of them. We had a big pine tree in our garden. The tree was part of my first memory. Underneath the pine tree grew all kinds of flowers in all the colors of the rainbow. The flowers were always in the shadow, but they still flourished. I remember it being so magical. In the darker times of my life, this remembered me that I could also grow without sunshine. My father is Christian Ludwig Otto Lagerfeld. He was a businessman and he was always busy with his company that produced and imported evaporated milk. My father was nothing like me. He always wore a hat and salt and pepper suits, which I hated. Even when he was young, he carried a wooden stick with him. At the time my parents met, my mother Elizabeth Baumann was a lingerie saleswoman from Berlin. She had a very luxurious short white hair and always wore long pearl earrings. My mother was always on a diet because she wanted to stay slim and she usually wore outfits from Sonia Riquille and a lot of striped clothes and accessories. She hated my work and refused to wear something of my collection. My mother always said to me, you're like me but not as good. Or she would say, you're six and I'm not so make an effort or shut up. So I wanted to grow up as soon as possible. For years I kept my date of birth a secret so no one would know my age. Childhood didn't always feel easy. The bond between my family and me wasn't strong. My parents were happily married and they raised three children with ease. But after some years this started to change and they started to fight more often. You never knew when the next explosion would be. My family was financially very privileged. The closer we came to the war, the richer my family got. My family got totally shielded from the war due to my father's business interests in Germany. I haven't really experienced wartime, even though I was born in World War II. During the war, I went to a private school in Germany. In 1952, I decided to move to Paris to finish my secondary school on the Lycée Montaigne in Paris, where I majored in drawing and history. After finishing my secondary school, I attended a design competition which was sponsored by the International Wool Secretariat in 1955. I won first place and I was hired as Pierre Baumann's assistant. Yves Saint Laurent was also interested in me, but I decided to work for Baumain. Here I learned all about textures and the patterns of clothing. After six months, I became the head of Baumain and they fired everyone because I could do all the work myself. I worked three years together with Baumain and then I decided to move to Jean Patou, where I designed two haute couture collections per year. My first collection was poorly received. My second collection was well received, but it wasn't a hit. After five years, I became bored at Jean Patou, 
and I tried to get back to school. That didn't work out, so I spent two years mostly lying on the beaches. I would say I, I guess I studied life. In 1963, I started working for Tiziani, a Roman couture house. It was haute couture, but in transition to ready to wear. I worked with Evan Richards and together we sketched the first collection in 1963. In 1963 I also started working for Chloe. We came up with more than 90 outfits and Tiziani was so impressed that they opened a shop to sell our designs. In 1964 I also started working for Fendi and designed their famous logo in 3 minutes. I stopped designing for Tiziani in 1969. In 1971, I met my life partner, Dandy Jacques de Bachet. In 1970, I was famous enough to make my own perfume line under the brand Chloe. After that, I felt so good to be famous that I decided to throw a lot of parties and one of them became a legend. It was a Venetian masquerade ball. I gradually started to become fat. I wore black glasses because it made me feel more confident. In 1982, I started to work for Chanel. Everyone thought I was crazy because that brand was way below my league. Chanel was seen as an old fashioned brand, but I made it fashionable again. Now almost everyone has the desire to buy something from Chanel. In 1987, I started my photography career. I have uh, photographed almost all the ads for Chloe and Chanel. When I traveled around the world, I wanted to feel at home. That's why I bought a lot of properties so I could make myself at home. I also bought a beautiful property in Brittany. It was a chateau and it always smelled like flowers. It was my mother's house and I visited the chateau until my mother died. To keep the beautiful memory, I never visited the chateau again. The Queen of England also visited my chateau once and the minute she stepped out of the car she said it's almost like I'm walking into a painting. I don't drink, do drugs or smoke. I always carry the van so on photos you couldn't see my full face and also you couldn't see that I gained a lot of weight. But I love being around people who were drunk or high because I'm fascinated by people with a talent for self-destruction. Drunk or high people are less boring because people like me bore myself till death. I started to work with all kinds of brands and designers to get new inspiration for example together with H&M, Coca-Cola, Sephora and Volkswagen. In 2000, I decided to go on a diet and I adopted my current look. I don't have children, so I treat my models as my children. And now I'm called Grandpa by the child of one of my male models. I have a cat nowadays, which I treat as my child. Because my cat doesn't like to travel, I'm always, always at home. When I'm at home, my hair is tied up. A bit looser than my normal hair. I never wear my glasses because they are not needed. I wear long white shirts that reach the ground with long sleeves. I wear this look also when I'm working. I'm a big fan of trash cans. When a drawing is finished, it always goes in the trash can. I'm very against remembrance. At one point, you just vanish. And my time will also come. Thank you.